Hi, camera every day. It's me again on the Cameron Chocolate Couch, here to talk about some important issues. Today's important issue is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is a neat little diagram that you might want to look at if you're feeling out of whack. Now, you have your basic needs, which I'll get into, your psychology needs, and your self-fulfillment needs. And you need the, each little line in kind of a general order to move up. And at the top, you have self-actualization, right? And at the bottom, you have food, water, warmth, and rest. You're not going to get that self-actualization without a proper night's sleep and proper vitamins and calories, right? So let's talk a little bit about the basic needs on this thing. Now you can look it up online and follow along because I know you probably can't read my my great chart. But um but dun -dun. that's my butt um joke. I'm trying to knock that shit out this year. So two of your basic needs are safety and then there's sociological needs, like I was just saying. Food, water, warmth, and rest. Now we'll get to these in a minute, but they're pretty self-explanatory. You need those things, otherwise you're going to be unhappy, right? Now with the security and the safety, I think that's really referring to things you need, such as how to put a roof over your head. Security is like money. You need money to ensure that your lifestyle is going to be kept up, you know what I mean? Without any money coming in, you're not going to be able to get any kind of action going, right? So that, those two kind of go together. But I would say that food, water, and warmth, and rest are more important. That's why they're at the bottom. But they're both in the same block. You get what I'm saying? We'll, we'll touch on the, the food in a minute. Belongingness and love needs. Now this is in your sociological needs. And this says intimate relationships and friends. Now, I think intimate relationships is kind of a natural thing you're going to find in your life if you're on the right path. They're just going to come into your life at the right moments. So it's not really something that you really want to be too worried about. The friends, however, are a little more important, I think. I think you want some good friends. You want to have some good trust and love between you guys. And um, I think you can use a lot of, you don't need a lot of friends, but you need some good ones, you know? So if you don't have many, just be kind and uh, try and improve the ones you do. And if you don't have any, you definitely should be trying to get make some new ones. Whether you make new friends through your work or through your activities, or you want to get involved in some more hobbies or something that involve other people. For instance, lately I've been playing basketball a lot with my friends, and it's a good way we all get to get together and shoot some hoops and have some laughs and just kind of not take life so seriously, and I get a lot out of it. The other one in this category is esteem needs, prestige and feeling of accomplishment. This basically means you should be finishing things in your life. You don't want to be constantly not finishing things. I'm already just thinking about music and all the music projects I have that I haven't finished. Those don't give me any satisfaction. I only really get satisfaction from the ones I've finished, you know? I mean, sometimes I get satisfaction from some cool ideas I've pulled off, but you don't really pull them off unless you finish them. That's just me. You know, another category of this could be reading books. You could be starting a lot of books, but unless you're finishing them, you're not really, you don't really have that, you know what I'm saying? And uh, there's some books you can pick up and kind of get some interesting information out of. And I'll, you know, I'll give yourself a little bit of accomplishment out of that if you're learning something. But a feeling of accomplishment can come from multiple ways. And I'm sure you're already thinking of ways you can apply that to your own life. And I encourage you to radiate, meditate on those things. You know, Think about them before you go to bed. That goes down to the very bottom. Rest. Rest is underrated. You really need all the sleep you can get. So if you're all gung-ho about waking up hella early, you better be going to bed super early because you're kind of getting zipped off if you're not getting your full eight hours. I usually try and get eight or nine, and if I don't, I really notice how it impacts my, my day the next day. 
I mean, really notice it. So I think that's definitely one of the most important things is sleep. The top one is if you're meeting all these things, you have security, you have all your food and stuff, you got a little, you know, thing going on, you got your friends, maybe you got a little significant other popping in and out of your life, and then you're, you're finishing things, you're, um, you're elevating yourself in these, I don't want to say macro, they could be macro or bigger small things you're finishing. That's when you get to the top of the pyramid, which is your ultimate fulfillment, supposedly, you know? This is life, you know, there's a lot of ways to make it simple. This is a, there's also a lot can come up, so this is, you know, I'm just trying to relate, relay some information. Achieving one's full potential, including creative activities. So this is when you're basically like killing the game, and you know it, you know, you have irons in the fire, you're doing things actively that you're kind of involved with and that you're kind of are making you you, you're killing it, and then you're thinking ahead even further, past your irons in the fire, that's when you're going to become really happy, I swear it. You're going to be basically feeling like you own the world and you're just going to be looking forward to every single day because there's stuff you want to do. And then, you know, you're sitting on a pyramid of this stuff, so you love all your your friends and whatnot, but don't get, don't get, don't get too far away from that stuff. You know, myself, I've definitely been in the top square of the triangle and then had terrible problems with intimate relationships and friends. And then I've had terrible problems with rest and food. I'll blame coffee and lack of knowing what the hell to eat. So... This is a nice little thing. If you've never heard of Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, it's a nice thing to look at. Sometimes it could shift some building blocks around in your head. It's kind of basic, so I, I apologize that this is kind of a waste of information. It really isn't. But uh, I figured I would talk about it because it's super simple and it could, you know, might turn someone on some ideas. I'll talk about food and whatnot later on. I know I keep pushing it off. Because it's kind of a huge topic, but my food was messing me up looking at this, and that was kind of s screwing up everything else. I thought I was eating okay, but it was kind of ruining everything else. So if you get some cracks in the lower lower part of this pyramid, you'll definitely suffer on the higher higher up parts. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. So although it's simple, it's a, it's actually a nice thing to look at and make sure you've got going on. Thanks for watching. Ah, it's been one of the most productive days I've had in a long time. And I've been producing EDM all day. <laughs> well, since about like 12 o'clock probably. It's 10 now, so 10 hours, it's pretty long. And I'm gonna blame the colostrum. I don't know what it is, but I've just been feeling good. It could be a million, million things, but I'm going to blame the colostrum. You know, I'm going to blame that real milk. That real milk. I'm working on a collab with someone that starts with a Z, an X. So. <laughs>
But yeah, I don't know. I'm just checking in, you know. This will probably go up tomorrow, but this is today. <laughs> you know, speaking of that claustrum, I've been here for quite a minute. I should probably hop out for a second. I've been in the zone, though. You know, I don't want to disrupt the zone. Dottie's in the zone, too. Let's get some of that colostrum. Let's get some of that colostrum. <laughs> I know. Look at this shit. <laughs> Again, I've got a video where I try it. I'm gonna try it now, but it's, I'm telling you right now, it's salty. It's salty goodness. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. She wants some of my milk, but I'm not going to give her this special colostrum. I want to do a, a Snapchat shout out right now. I'm going to include a couple clips from my Snapchat of funny things that happened today. It is an obvious choice for me because you know I'm just going to come as I am, you know, as I were, as you want me to be. Because my Snapchat has been fired recently. Again, it's came every day. Came every day on Snapchat. I highly recommend it. Tons of advice, life advice, bountiful amounts of motivation, and a little bit of strife. There's really nothing negative about it. I can't say enough good things about it. You get on the spot updates with the serial killer on the loose. He could be out the window right now. He's on the loose. Actually, I heard that they're closing in on him. I don't know what that means. We have that insider scoop, you know? I got a text message that says so. So, peace out. Thanks for watching. You want to see something? There it is. It's the new Disfiguring the Goddess album. It's in the flesh. I feel like I should leak the whole thing on my Cam Every Day YouTube channel because I feel like it's going to be like a couple months before it comes out. Typically, with Disfiguring the Goddess, I like it to be a very flush project. I like to start it with an idea, and I like to finish it. Hold on, my butt's rumbling. I got this sub pack. Shout out to sub pack. It's an awesome tool. It allows me to have these tiny speakers, but still kind of feel the bass. It's kind of difficult with this stuff, because the low end is so rich. And it, this album's particularly beefy. So it's, it's a bit of an experiment when it comes to the production. But I'm just going off like what I want to hear and what I want to feel with this type of music at this type of time. But back to the process with Disfiguring. I like it to be a straight shot. I have the idea in mind. I start it. I, my workflow complements my pace and my idea. And I'm able to execute. And then I get to flush out the mix and everything and not really worry about it too much have a simple mastering job and I always use the same artist Toshio Ogawa he did all the artwork except for Circle of Nine which was done by Alexander Eastman who's the same guy who did the the legendary Disfiguring the Goddess logo Ink. shout out to Alexander Eastman and his new band well 
his new band that's coming out with their first album. I'll, I'll just say it quickly. Suntorn. Big, big respects to Alexander Eastman. <laughs> Sounds good to me. So this one, I usually just go until I run out of ideas. Every album's had a couple songs that didn't make the cut so far. I don't remember them being on Sleeper. Deprive had, I think, an Abrogation's Crown remake. And I don't think Black Hair Child had any extras, so maybe I'm lying about that. But um, but um, so that's my 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 workflow. I like to achieve with this figure in the goddess, and this one has had that, but it's been a very 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 long album. This album's I don't I, ha I don't have the final runtime, but I'm sure it's twice as long as some of the previous albums. I gotta render. I'm rendering all this right now. It's the first time I've ever rendered the whole thing. And I'm gonna send it to uh, Toshiro Ogawa and get the artwork rolling on, rolling on as I kind of test this in the car and decide if it's ready for, for mastering. I, I don't really know which more I'm gonna do. I just kind of want to hear the low end and um, get a feel for maybe a couple little rinky dinky details going on in the mix and whatnot. But I'm, I'm gonna get a different mastering technique for this one. Circle of Nine and Sleeper are, are obviously self-mastered when I didn't really know what was going on. Deprive and Blacker Child were mastered by the man, Tyler Blue, who is no longer doing music. RP to Tyler Blue's music. I wonder how he's doing. And he did a killer job on Deprive and Blacker Child. He's also the guy who taught me how to mix. Taught me about dynamic range and a bunch of stuff. Let me... I need to hear, like, the the tail on this. Oh shit, that cat's in the house. What the hell? This cat's always disrupting the process. The hell you want, Dottie? Dumb Dottie? Dottie's got a couple new nicknames, including Naughty Dottie. <laughs> She's not coming in here. Um. So back to the process, the long, boring process. I didn't even get to... All right. Sorry about this. I don't want to edit this shit out. I don't, make, I don't want a bunch of cuts. Um... But yeah, this album in particularly has been extra long, but it's had that flow that I desire when I'm working on this stuff. There's been a couple things that have taken me longer. The vocals, I think I really killed it on the vocals on this album. I'm really proud of that process. It took a while because there was twice as many songs, I had to write twice as many lyrics, and uh, that whole nine yards. I actually had to stop myself from writing more songs on guitar. I was like, alright, you gotta stop. This thing's getting too long. And some of the songs are really long. There's one song that's, dare I say, over seven minutes long. That's a first time in just figuring the goddess history. I've talked about this on this channel before. Um, and I'm gonna have to talk about this again. Because I, I definitely get a, this kind of comments on Facebook about how I was saying there was a new album in 2015 and then it never came out. That was because there was a new album in 2015, and it never came out. I don't have a title for it. There's really not much I could do about it. When I listen to the songs now, I think they're pretty good. It's kind of like what's been going on in my life. Like, I thought Came Every Day was trash. I thought things like my, uh, my music was trash, even though I just kept doing it. I have a release called Midways, which I put out in 2016, and it was kind of a spot, a SoundCloud exclusive project. Um, I'm actually getting some help from my buddy Omar on the artwork, and here it is on SoundCloud. You listen to it right now, but I, I hit it because I thought it was trash. 
and I listened to it the other day, and I was like, this isn't trash, and this des deserves to be on Spotify. So I'm, I probably have the same exact feelings towards that Disfiguring the Goddess album that never will be. And it's, it's like seven tracks long, just as long as the last two. I don't know what it was about it. I just couldn't, I couldn't finish the process, and I tried to remix the songs too many times at certain parts of the process. And it just kind of messed up with the overall rhythm. And at the time, I was very frustrated in my life with various things, such as direction and something going on inside. You know, I kind of talk about that often, but there is something going on. Gosh, this cat is driving me nuts. One moment. I love that cat, but she drives me nuts. I feel like I need to walk around to do cam every day. You know, there's just not much walk around room in here. But yeah, I basically want to say the album is in its final stages. And I'm happy to be back to the game. I have no idea if that album that I made in 2015 will ever come out. I kind of just want to keep looking forward. And, um... You know, continue on to make new stuff. Although... I don't want to say I won't ever go back and redo it or something. I did it in a different program too. As you guys can see, I'm now rocking a PC, which is the best machine, and a, uh, a new program for disfiguring. So all these things are kind of new to the equation. And I'm looking forward to a healthy year of disfiguring the goddess. Uh, let's, let's leave some of the mystery in there but I've uh, I've got a drive for sure and I can't wait to finish this album and I'm, I've just been feeling really creative with Disfiguring the Goddess I want to say that this is probably the most personal Disfiguring the Goddess album I've ever done on a bunch of different levels and I, I really enjoyed that part of the process Disfiguring's always been pretty personal but this time around has been even more so there's like an emotional element to disfiguring now. And, uh, you know, it's just totally disguised in brutality. So don't, don't let that get you tripped up on anything. But yeah, I guess I'll do more on this later. I want to do... We've talked about it, Parker and I, about doing a Disfiguring the Goddess documentary about these missing years. Kind of using some of this footage... And even when I was working on the last album, the one I never released, I have all this footage that I never put out. And I've got some footage from Black Earth Child I never released either. Just like some thought videos and videos of me stringing my guitar and uh, Luke doing some vocals in the closet and whatnot. Some weird shit. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I even went to my grandma's house to try and finish the album one time because I just wanted to change my environment and she can't hear really well so I was like screaming in the other room and it was totally fine but I have footage from that and uh, we'll see we'll see what happens for the future but the first thing is first there needs to be new music and uh, I, I have it and I can't wait to deliver it this might have trailed on longer than I intended it to be I shouldn't have started filming in the middle of me doing something but I just wanted to update came every day with some of the the processes and the the status of disfiguring the goddess long live thanks for watching hello internet i'm big chocolate i'm here with another weekly update on what's going on now the immediate things that are going on are some tour dates that are happening next week so if you live in the southeast keep your ears peeled right now on the 23rd, I'm going to Tallahassee, Florida, at Yen Ace with That Boy Smith. On the 24th, I'm going to Tampa, Florida, at the TK Lounge with That Boy Smith. On the 25th, I'm going to Birmingham, Alabama, at Woody's with That Boy Smith. And you guessed it, on the 26th, I'm going to Orlando, Florida, at the Hieno Center with, you guessed it, That Boy Smith. I'm sorry, Florida, if I'm missing where you're at. The thing I can think of off the top of my head is Fort Lauderdale. Apologies to you guys. 
Fort Lauderdale. But the rest of Florida, I'm coming for you. Next week with That Boy Smith. Some other dates coming up. March 1st in Philadelphia at the Warehouse in Watts. Jay Kenzo, Enigma Dubs, myself, Tyrion Sound are coming. It's going to be awesome. PK Sound, it's going to be awesome. Now on March 5th, I'm coming to Charlotte, North Carolina at Surge. More info on my Facebook. Now here's for the rest of the news. Cam Every Days are back online. Yes, I took them down. I don't know what I was thinking. You can go now and check them all out if you've been missing them or if you've never even seen them and you could see many years of my life on YouTube. I've also been uploading some more recent videos, so hit subscribe, check them out. Disfiguring the Goddess. I know this is a big topic. I wanted to talk about it here. I wanted to keep you guys updated with my weekly videos. It's nearly completed. It's in the post-processing stage. When I say nearly completed, I mean it's done. It's just the final little tidbits of mixing and small decision making are being done right now before it gets sent off to mastering and the artwork's being done and there's a little bit of processing time with production time I should say and then it's going to be here. The time of the new Disfigure and the Goddess album title will be here and we'll all rejoice. Couldn't be more happy with it. It absolutely slams. There's also a Disfiguring the Goddess Facebook group called DTGG, Disfiguring the Goddess group. So find that on Facebook. Request to be a member. Hang out with the other members. Say hello in the community. Get your feet wet in the water of the Disfiguring the Goddess Facebook group pool. There's also some merch for Disfiguring the Goddess on Bandcamp. I believe there's hats, koozies, and bottle openers, Black Earth Child CDs, and there's only three shirts left, but there is more merchandise on the way. So stay tuned, sign up for the group, you'll be the first to know. Midways. Midways is a secret SoundCloud, it's not a secret, but it's a SoundCloud album I put out in 2016, and I took it down for some reason. I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking right in my head. I went back the other day, recently, and was checking it out, and I was like, these are great. So I made them all in public, and they're back for your listening pleasure. And I'm going to put them on Bandcamp and streaming services later this week for even more accessibility to expand your Big Chocolate catalog in your own home. There's also merch for Big Chocolate. If you go to the Big Chocolate Bandcamp page, there's a slew, a slang, a gang of merch. Tons of different items. I'm shipping all it, all it all out myself. The disfiguring, the big chocolate. I'm back to those those roots of shipping and handling some merch. So, much love to the prior merch distributors in my life, but I'm doing it now. And I'm packing those packages with love. Hmm. I think that's all I have this week. Thank you for watching. Tune in next week. Hope to see you in Florida as well, if you live in Florida. If not, see you here.